This video is about balancing equations. It's really important to balance equations when we write symbol equations because we need to show that in the chemical reaction no atoms are lost or gained. So you need exactly the same number of atoms on the left hand side as you do on the right hand side of the arrow. So if we take the example of reacting magnesium with oxygen to make magnesium oxide when we react with magnesium with oxygen it forms a new compound which is magnesium oxide now you might be wondering why we've written mg without a number but o2 with the number 2 and that's because oxygen goes around in pairs. Okay, so that's why we call it O2, because it is two atoms of oxygen bonded with each other. Magnesium, on the other hand, doesn't, but we don't write the little number one. It's just like algebra, you never write the number one, you only write if there are more than one atoms. So magnesium we can just show with one atom like this. When magnesium and oxygen react together they make magnesium oxide. As you can see there are no numbers next to the Mg or the O. Therefore there is only one atom of Mg, magnesium, bonded to one atom of oxygen. So if we were to draw this, we draw one atom of magnesium bonded to one atom of oxygen. But here we have our problem. We need the same number of atoms this side as we do on this side of the equation. But as you can see here, we've got two oxygen atoms and over here we only have one. We have one magnesium and as far as this one's concerned at the moment this is okay because we have the same number of magnesiums on this side. We now need to make sure that we have the same number of atoms either side of the equation and the only way that we do that is by putting numbers in front of the substances here or here. We cannot in any way change any small numbers by the molecules because these tell us what the molecule or compound is like. So we can't put any little numbers in at the bottom. We can't change any numbers at the bottom. The only thing we can do is put multiply numbers at the front of the substances. So first of all what we do is count how many of each element we've got on each side. So I'm going to start to list my elements. We've got magnesium and we've got one of those and we've got oxygen and we've got two of those. On the right hand side of the equation obviously we've got the same elements magnesium and oxygen but this time we've got only one magnesium and one oxygen. So on this side of the equation we need to make sure that there are two oxygens and the only way that we can do that is by putting a number two in front of the magnesium oxide. That means we have two lots of this compound magnesium oxide. So what we could do is now we've put the number two in front of it we could draw another magnesium oxide because all we're saying is now we've got two lots of magnesium oxide so we can change the numbers of the elements that we've got now got by putting a number two in front of it you multiply each of the elements in the compound so we've got two times mg so now we've got we'll cross that one through and we've got two mg and we've got 2 
times oxygen. So we'll cross that one out here and we have two oxygen. Now we go back and check that these numbers are the same as these numbers over here. So now our oxygen is correct. We've got two oxygen and two oxygen, but now our magnesium is incorrect because we've only got one here, whereas we've got two magnesium on this side. So we can only put numbers in front of these two. We don't need to change the oxygen because we've got two on each side already, but we do need to make the number of magnesium become two. So we can put a big two multiplier in front of the magnesium. So now we can have another magnesium here. We'll cross this through and we'll put two magnesium. And we should see now that this equation is balanced. So you have two magnesium, two oxygen, two magnesium and two oxygen. And if you count up the atoms, two red magnesiums there, two red magnesiums, two oxygens and two oxygens. So now that equation is balanced. If we try another example, we could have, for example, calcium plus hydrochloric acid. So I'll try and do the elements in different colours to help you out. So we've got H and then Cl. And on the other side, we would have Ca, Cl2 and then plus hydrogen. So if we were to draw this out again, we'd have Ca, and we've got no numbers here, so we need to assume that that's a 1. We've got H and Cl bonded together. So that's our HCl molecule. And then these make CaCl2. So we have Ca bonded to now two chlorines. And we have a hydrogen molecule, which like oxygen, goes off in pairs. So just like before, we can start making a list of our elements that we've got each side. So here we've got Ca, H and Cl for calcium, hydrogen and chlorine. And exactly the same the other side, Ca, H and Cl. Now we need to count up how many atoms of each element that we've got. So here there's no number, so we know that's one calcium. There's no number next to H, so we know that's one hydrogen. And there's no number next to chlorine, so we know that is one chlorine. On the other side, there's no number next to Ca, so we know that's one. There's a number two next to chlorine, so we know there are two chlorines and there is a number two next to hydrogen so that we know there are two hydrogens. Now we need to try and balance this equation so that there are the same number of each element on each side. So if we look at calcium, at the moment they're balanced, we've got one calcium on the left and one calcium on the right but hydrogen and chlorine are not balanced because we've got one of each on the left and two of each on the right. So we need to balance these up. So on this side, if we were to put a two in front of this HCl molecule, we would now have two hydrogens and two chlorines. And we need to check, now we've done something, whether they're now balanced up. So we've got one calcium, two hydrogens, two chlorines on the left, one calcium, two hydrogens, and two chlorines on the right. So if we were to draw these as the atom symbols, 
we would just have two lots of hydrogen chloride here and they would bond together to make calcium chloride and hydrogen given off as well. It's always good practice to write down the number of each element you've got each side and then try to balance them up. So now it's your turn to have a go at a few um, balancing equations yourself. Here are three examples. Pause the video now and try and balance these equations here. So let's see how you got on, starting with this equation, magnesium plus hydrochloric acid makes magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. So the first thing we do is list the elements we've got, we've got Mg, H and Cl. So on this side we've got 1 Mg, 1 H and 1 Cl. On the right hand side of the equation we've got 1 Mg, 2 Cl and 2 H is for hydrogen. So we need to put some numbers in front of some of the substances to make these balanced. So because we need to balance the hydrogens and the chlorines, if we put a number 2 in front of the H and the Cl, we would now have 2 H's, because it's 2 times H, and 2 Cl's and we can see that that equation is now balanced. Our second example, again we follow the same practice, list out the elements that we've got, Na and O, and on this side Na and O. So we've got one Na on the left, two oxygens, and on the right we've got two Na's and one oxygen. So we need to balance both the sodium, the Na, and the oxygen. So if we were to put two um, in front of this, the sodium oxide, we would be able to balance up the number of oxygens. So we've got two on this side, and now we have two times the oxygen on this side. However, we've changed now the number of sodiums because we no longer just have two, because we've put this multiplier two in front, we have two lots of two sodiums. So we have two times two, which is four sodiums now. So now we need to go back over to the left hand side and try and balance up the sodiums. The oxygens are okay, we can leave those, but we need four sodiums. So we will have to put a number four in front of the sodiums. Now we have four sodiums, two oxygens on the left, and four sodiums, and two oxygens on the right. Our final example, we need to list out all the elements again. So we've got H, Cl, Na, C, and O. And again on this side, H, Cl, Na, C, and O. And we need to count up how many we've got of each. So we've got 1 H, 1 Cl, 2 Na's, 1 C, and 3 O's. On this hand side, we've got 2 H for hydrogen, 1 Cl for chlorine, 1 Na for sodium, 1 C for carbon, and this is where we need to count them up, 1, 2, 3 oxygens, because we take the 2 from the CO2 and add that to the 1 oxygen which is in this water here. So as you can see at the moment, the number of each element is unbalanced. So we need two hydrogens on this side because we've got two on this side. So what we can do is put the number 2 in front of HCl. That will now give us two H's and it will give us two Cl's. 
We now check our numbers again and we notice that still we have a situation where our chlorines and our sodiums are not balanced on either side. Our hydrogen's okay, our carbon's okay and our oxygen is okay but here we have two elements which are not yet balanced. So we need more chlorines and sodium on this side. So we can put a large 2 in front of NaCl. This will make now two chlorines and two sodiums. And that is now the equation balanced. We can check here the number of atoms of each element and make sure that they are balanced. Now with all these balancing equations, it's a little bit of um, trial and error. Don't forget you can only ever put the numbers in front of the substances. You can't change these small numbers which tell you what the compound or the molecule looks like.